This is Geeta Thakur. Uh, we are doing chapter 10, Life Processes from CBSC 10th. Today we are going to be talking about autotropic nutrition. Auto actually means self and tropic means nutrition. So autotropic means self-nutrition. Over here we are going to be talking about plants, how they make their own food. Uh, autotropic nutrition is actually of two kinds. We have photosynthesis and we have chemosynthesis. Photo is light and synthesis is coming together. So it's about how uh, plants make their food, food with the help of light, using light energy. Chemosynthesis is the same thing, how plants uh, make their energy uh, using uh, chemicals. Uh, there isn't much to know about chemosynthesis actually. What we need to know about chemosynthesis is deep, deep, deep under the sea, we have plants that don't receive any sunlight. They use the sulfur and methane that comes out of the earth's crust and they use these chemicals to uh, make their own food. In fact, we did not know about chemosynthesis for about uh, for the past 40 years. I think it's just, it was discovered in the past 40 years and now there's an entire life cycle around uh, chemosynthetic plants and organisms that eat these animals. So uh, that's all about chemosynthesis and up next is photosynthesis. So photosynthesis, uh, photosynthesis is the process that by which plants make their own food. The plants need carbon dioxide and water. These are the raw materials that they use, carbon dioxide, water and sunlight. Sunlight is the energy that is actually converted into chemical energy. Uh, so when you, when you see the equation, we have carbon dioxide plus water that gives us sugar, which is C6H12O6 and oxygen. Oxygen is a byproduct that is uh, made in this. Uh, how do plants get their carbon dioxide? By stomata. They get their water by the roots. Uh, they mix these two in the presence of sunlight to make their own food. We are going to study more about this process with the help of this plant over here. And what we are going to do with this plant is we are going to cover it, keep it in the darkness for three days. So I'm just going to cover it up. Make sure it's in a dark room, we switch off all the lights and just come back to it, visit it after three days. Okay, I'll see you then. Okay, I hope you had a good three days because now we are going to prep our plant for the next part. The point of keeping it in darkness for three days is to starve the plant, is to make sure that it doesn't get any nutrition from the sunlight. Uh, it's not able to make any glucose and because of this the plant has starved. Now that we know that there isn't a lot of starch present in the plant, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to use a little bit of Vaseline uh, to prepare one of the leaves. What Vaseline does is it closes the stomata. We have stomata present at the bottom leaf, a lot of stomata present at the bottom of the plant and uh, oh, the Vaseline is actually going to close those pores up. I'm going to apply it only on just on half of the leaf over here on the top. There is some stomata on the top as well and on the same side on the bottom as well. This makes sure that the plant can't really take in carbon dioxide thereby cutting off. It's, it's one of its essential inorganic substance that it needs to make food. The next thing we are going to do is deprive the food, uh, deprive a part of this of sunlight. So I have an aluminum foil over here. I will wrap this off on the leaf over here. The silver foil is a very good reflector and this makes sure it blocks off all the sunlight. So I have a plant over here uh, that has been de-starched, that has been starving for three days. What I do now is I block off the carbon dioxide of one side of the leaf and I block the sunlight of one of the other sides of the leaf. Uh, now what I do is I let the plant eat, I let it make its own food and uh, give it some time in the sunlight. Uh, we are going to let this remain for six hours in sunlight and then come back to it later. All that we need to know in photosynthesis is that the plants take in carbon dioxide through the stomata. The water is broken up by the energy of the sunlight. The sunlight is absorbed by the chlorophyll as the water breaks up into H2 and O2 the hydrogen reacts with the carbon dioxide to give you glucose, that is C6H12O6, leaving oxygen as a byproduct. The oxygen is expelled out of the plant as a waste product through the stomata again. So I have my prepared plant over here and I also have another plant over here. This plant was again kept in darkness for 
three days and then exposed to six hours of sunlight. Over here, if you see, we have green and red parts in, on the plant, right? The green parts are actually the plants that perform photosynthesis where we expect to find the starch and the red parts of the plant are where we will not, not find any starch. So I take these four leaves. So this is my starved leaf that has had no sunlight. This is my starved leaf that has had no carbon dioxide. This is my starved leaf that has had that parts of it that have no chlorophyll. And this is just a starved leaf. All these leaves were kept in sunlight for six hours after starvation. So they have had enough time to make their food. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this leaf and I'm going to kill it basically. I'm going to kill the cells of all of the leaves. So what we do is we put it in hot water and we're going to immerse the leaf for two minutes. We're going to do this test with all our leaves. The next step to see the presence of starch in a leaf is that we, we are going to dip it in ethyl alcohol or surgical spirit. Ethyl alcohol will give you better results but if you cannot procure it easily you can also use a surgical spirit. I'm going to dip this I'm going to put this in the beaker, put in some of the alcohol, make sure it's completely immersed. What this alcohol does is actually the chlorophyll, uh, the pigment, the green pigment dissolves in this, but I need to heat it up a little bit, for which I'll use a water bath. So again, I dip this in water, in boiling water. It's always best to perform this experiment outdoors because you don't want to be inhaling the fumes. This process should take about two minutes to do. All right, so after uh, giving it an alcohol bath for two minutes, and this is my dechlorinated leaf. Okay, it has lost its color substantially. Please note that the color of the water is, uh, color of the alcohol is green now. That's because it has absorbed all the chlorophyll. The next part of this is going to be trying, uh, is going to be dipping this in iodine and seeing how it reacts. I am going to take a part of the leaf again. The leaf has also become quite crisp. This is because it loses all its water content with the alcohol. And now we are going to be putting some iodine in this. And we keep this for another two minutes. We can see that the leaf has turned blue black. And this is the test for starch. So now we are going to repeat the experiment and then we will get back to you with the results. Alright, so over here we have the results of our tests, guys. This is the first leaf. We have three parts of this leaf. The first one was only boiled. The second one was uh, put in ethyl alcohol. It has lost its color like you see. And the third one has become blue-black because of the iodine test. This is our second leaf. This is our third leaf. Over here we have the Vaseline portion. You can see that this is still, uh, this hasn't turned blue-black and this side of the leaf has turned blue black because of presence of starch. Finally, we have the last leaf over here. Again, this has turned blue black, but this part of the leaf hasn't because this one was the tip, I'm guessing, of the leaf was the only part that didn't receive sunshine, but the rest of the leaf did manage to make food. All right, to recap, what we did in the experiment is we took a leaf, we took a starved leaf, let it cook its food for six hours. We put it in boiling water. The reason to put it in boiling water is twofold. A, it kills the cells and it also uh, makes the cell wall more permeable, letting things go inside and outside. Next thing that we did is take ethyl alcohol and make sure all the chlorophyll gets dissolved in the ethyl alcohol so the leaf is as plain and as colorless as possible. That's what ethyl alcohol does. It dissolves the chlorophyll. Uh, water is a polar solvent. It dissolves a lot of stuff but chlorophyll doesn't dissolve in water so we use ethyl alcohol. Finally, we take iodine. Now we took the iodine, um, mixed it in it and all the starch that was left in the leaf reacted with this iodine, turning it bluish black. Alright? So the two things that plants really need for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide and water. Let's talk about carbon dioxide first. How do they get the carbon dioxide that they need to make their food? Carbon dioxide is taken in by stomata. Stomata is found on the leaf, right? We have the lower surface of the leaf and we have the upper. The lower surface of the leaf has a lot of stomatal openings. Okay, stomata is nothing 
but an opening that is surrounded by guard cells. When the guard cells don't have a lot of water, they are flaccid and it's closed. When the guard cells have water, they act, all the water comes in and the opening opens up. This is the basic mechanism of how the stomata opens and closes. The guard cells open when there is a lot of water and the guard cells close when they are flaccid. Uh, as the, when the stomata opens, it's basically because of diffusion. The plant is actually making a lot of oxygen. All of this ox oxygen escapes. The plant has a lot of water. The water escapes too. And the air has a higher con concentration of carbon dioxide and this comes in via the stomatal opening. The next thing that plants really need for nutrition is water. Water is very important for them because they make their food using water. Uh, how do plants take in water? They basically take in the water through their roots. Okay, So roots have a high concentration of ions inside them and because of this the water basically enters the root hair via osmosis. Uh, then it's transported up via the xylem which we are going to learn more about in transpiration. A lot of water vapor is also leaving the leaves uh, through the stomatal openings. Again we learn about this in transportation of nutrients in plants. It's not just water that the roots absorb from the root hair, it's also magnesium, iron, phosphates, and most importantly nitrogen. All of this is absorbed by the root hair uh, for nutrition of the plant. So that's it, that actually concludes our video on autotropic nutrition, on how plants make their food, on how they get their raw materials and what happens. Please let me know if you have any questions and please do not forget to answer my question as to when the stomata is closed during the night, how plants breathe. I'm quite looking forward to finding that answer out. Uh, thank you. If you like the video, please give it a like. Please share this with your friends and let me know what other videos you would like us to do in the future. Thank you.